Brown Ham here, and before you, you see a kel PF-9. This is a, a gun that I'm kind of enamored with. Uh, it's an inexpensive gun, uh, designed and uh, built by kel which is ran by a, a guy by the name of George Kelgren, and uh, I've actually met him once, had a short conversation with him, and and uh, he's not as personable as I would have liked, but <laughs> he, he basically said, no, we're not going to uh, build a 45 caliber Caltech. Uh, at the time, I was one of his biggest fans. I, uh, I owned a P11, and uh, I didn't own a, any other of the, the Caltech products at the time, but I've ended up buying a lot since then. Uh, P11 is a good gun. Uh, this one, I believe, is uh, what the P11 should have been initially now the p like don't get me wrong the the Keltec p11 is a is a great gun but uh you know it was a little bit too much of a grendel for me and if you if you understand that reference uh, you'll you'll know what i mean uh this one's a lot more refined in some ways but it, it's still a george kelgren design in others so let's go into it i will clear the gun it uh, locks back on an empty magazine you can see that it is empty uh, the magazine is empty, and we'll move on. So the PF9 is essentially an evolved version of the P11, a single stack version. The P11 had a uh, had two, or had a double column magazine. This one's only a single column magazine. Some of the features are uh, that are different. It's got a, a different spring and uh, extractor system, which I like better. It's uh, it seems to be a better system. A little more complex, but it, it seems like it'll be a little more robust. Uh, the sights, uh, the rear sight is held on with a screw, which is a difference. The uh, front sight's very similar. Uh, overall, the profile is streamlined, uh, more like the earlier, the, uh, earlier P32 and uh, P380. So uh, it's got a metal magazine release, metal slide lock release, and uh, there, there's a takedown uh, pin right there. So let's get right into it. There's not a whole lot uh, to, to go over on this gun while it's open. It's a very small gun, very narrow, but it, it fits really well in my hands. And I don't know if that's unique for me, you know, if it's good for me. The, the slide is, is well above the hand, so it won't pinch, and I, I often get slide by it and hammer by it, so that's not an issue. It's got a preset hammer, which means you can only, uh, it's double action, but it's not completely double action. You can't do a double strike because the hammer falls and it stays down there. Listen. That is preset, and now you can see the little back of the hammer there. It's flush with the back. You can also, you can't feel for it, which I would like if they'd put a little nub that went out that you could feel to see if it's... Uh, you know, if you've got a round in the chamber, or, or I guess that would be, you know, pretty much useless most of the time. But uh, once it's back there, then you've got a fairly long but smooth, for me, uh, trigger pull to, to get it to go off. Now to disassemble it, you lock the slide back. You need a disassembly tool, which in this case is a little uh, aluminum uh, 9mm case. Just pry the... Pry the uh, little disassembly pin out. Now if you see it's got a little uh, area where you just basically stick it in and pry it out and it comes out real easy. It's held on with the spring. You can see the spring down inside of there. Okay now restrain the slide and let it go forward and it goes off the frame. Unlike the Glock, the you don't have to pull the trigger to disassemble it. Um, it doesn't even have to be uh, the hammer doesn't even have to be, uh, um, well, it doesn't matter what the hammer is. You, you can pull the trigger if you want, but there's, there's no real use in it. Uh, don't ever pull the trigger, though, while the, the slide is off. So now that you, we've got the slide off, let me take the recoil spring off and the barrel out. Now that we've got the slide off, you should be able to see that this is mostly plastic. But down inside, the frame is actually aluminum from here all the way back to here and down uh, into the frame held on by these, uh, these pins here. Uh, not that pin, that pin's actually below it. 
uh, but it, it's actually the frame is actually aluminum real lightweight to kind of skeletonized here but that's on the inside so you don't uh, you don't get to see how skeletonized it is but uh, real lightweight they put metal where metal needed to be the trigger is plastic but it, it's held it, it holds on to a aluminum trigger bar everything uh, the, the slide rails are aluminum but the slide stop the hammer and all the internals are steel including the magazine release which is really good because the magazine is steel you want steel riding on steel very positive feel to the magazine i really like that one thing i don't like about the magazine is there's this little ledge that um, tends to not want to engage the slide stop reliably and uh, when I first got it I rounded beveled this here so that it would slide above the the slide stop a little bit easier as you might know if you, if you read up on them uh, the Keltex tend to need a little bit of attention out of the factory and uh, for what you pay for them that's okay uh, certainly you wouldn't want to have to do that to a Ruger or a Smith & Wesson you expect a more refined gun these are pretty refined they're uh, uh, they're actually a lot better than the, the original P11s for comparison purposes uh, I don't have a I, I thought I'd have one within arm's reach but I don't have anything to compare it to uh, so the slide I have uh, I painted this with gun coat and, and some of the gun coats starting to come off um, underneath it is uh, park rising so really I don't mind if it wears too much it was it was worn enough when I uh, when I gun coated it that uh, that uh, <laughs> I needed to parkerize it and I think that's that's going to be a long-term durable finish even if it doesn't look good after after a few thousand rounds we'll, we'll see I'm not to that point yet um, that's pretty much all there is to it typical uh, tilting barrel design uh, it is a uh, browning style design so tilting barrel uh, more akin to the uh, browning high power than anything else uh, that's a uh, tried and true design if you notice that the, the barrel is a little more polished up than you might expect out of the factory and and that had some wear on it and uh and it had some uh, uh no uh, no real rust but some discoloration so what i did is i polished that you wrap a uh a, a, a piece of uh wood with a cleaning cloth down into the vice or put it down in a vice and then impregnate the uh, cleaning cloth with a little bit of uh, polishing powder and then you just rub the the barrel the flat surfaces over it uh, round surfaces also and it does pretty well you can wrap pencils or little dowels with um with uh, a cleaning cloth and, and you can get all the all the areas on that i like to do that because it i think it looks better with the polish easier to clean it won't stain as quickly lasts longer i did the same thing with the feed ramp and that was uh, with a with a dowel I just fired it, but yeah, that, that's uh, you don't want to take any metal off necessarily. You just want to change the finish. So a little bit of uh, I think I use flits uh, for that. Uh, could be wrong. I, I don't know. I've got a couple of polishing powders. So there we go. Uh, not a whole lot to it. Great gun. I, I've got a, a shooting video that uh, we'll go into now, and I'll, I'll come back and I'll wrap it up. And I'm gonna single load this. Put a full mag in here so I have eight shots total. Everything seated fine. Here we go. Um, really stiff recoil. Uh, the the thing I like about it is uh, it's reliable. I, I've shot a lot. Um, 
know, four or five hundred rounds. I've shot it a lot and uh, real reliable. I like it better than uh, than my uh, P11 because it's narrower, it, it sits better uh, in the pocket. Uh, overall, if I had it to, to do over again, uh, uh, <laughs> I'd buy the uh, original chrome plated uh, finish if, if I could find one. If you could find a PF9 with uh, the chrome finish, a uh, wonderful gun. This is an earlier one. I, I think they've changed just a few things, but uh, they really don't. Keltec likes to keep with what they know. Uh, I'm going to fire another magazine with it. Uh, we'll see how it shoots again. Okay, now we're going to try and single load one, and uh, we'll another single load for the magazine. Uh, try, try some rapid fire, as, as rapid as I can get it. Okay, now that you've seen it fire, I'll go into some of the criticisms I have. Uh, I already went into the magazine. The major criticism I have over it is uh, uh, the currently is uh, it uh, it does kick. Uh, it, it it feels so ergonomic that I don't notice it too much, but it, it does wrench your wrist back. Uh, I don't shoot plus P's out of it. I don't even I don't believe I own any plus P's. I own just standard velocity. Um, or uh, I guess the higher uh, higher end of the standard velocity defensive type rounds uh, that I shoot out of it when I am uh, when I um, go to the range, uh, mostly in keeping with uh, my my intent. And my intent is uh, to continue to carry this. Uh, this is new. I, I had to retire my old one. I think I had a, a, um, a Michaels of Oregon. I, I don't just some cheap uh, sleeve. This fits really well, and I'll put the gun back, and I'll explain uh, my, my carry concept in a minute. And I'm also going to do another video on uh, my personal everyday carry guns. The one big problem I had, and I tried to send it back to, this fa to the factory, but they wouldn't let me. The one big problem I had with the gun is, if you, if you can tell, if it will focus right in there, you see some finish missing. Well, there's a, a little web that goes in between here. And that web is left by the factory, um, but if you pull the trigger and let the let, let the you know the hammer fall, what happens? Is, or, I'm sorry, let the hammer fall without a slide. There, uh, what happens is it 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 cracks and bends that uh, little web out into the magwell, and uh, you can see on the back of my magazine, see that little wear mark? Well, that was where the chunk of metal from the frame was wearing against the magazine. Uh, and I had never pulled the trigger. I bought it new and I'd never pulled the trigger with the frame off. Why? You don't do that. And I never had. It was cracked from the factory like that. And when I called the factory, they said, oh yeah, well, we know that. What we usually do is we grab it with a, a piece of uh, needle nose pliers at the factory and we pry that little piece out. Well, when they pried it out, they pried it out with uh, with a little chunk going into the Magwell and I said well, can I send it back and they said yeah uh, But you have to take the gun to FedEx um, and you have to uh, It's like uh, $35 you have to pay to ship it or something like that uh, and they'll ship it back and it, it seemed a little ludicrous to me uh, I don't know if they were gonna reimburse me. But I don't care. I, I took I took the gun apart and I, I took a, a file to that area and it's not super clean, but it, it, it gets the job done I took a file to that area and took all that area off. Um, if you are not faint of heart and if you're okay dealing with an occasional problem, the Keltec makes some good guns. I cannot say I've had a, had a Keltec that I haven't had any issues with other than my P380 and a lot of other people have issues with the P380. So I'm, I'm going to say that, uh, you know, Keltec just uh, produces mostly finished guns. It's, uh, you know, you ever hear the, the, Unfinished furniture. Well, these are eh, kind of unfinished guns. The uh, the <laughs> not quite, but pretty close. This is an early model, an early production model. So I I'm not gonna give them too much guff. I, I know the ones I've seen lately have been a little better, uh, but on in terms of reliability, uh, this has been a jackhammer. I've, I've fired well, probably close to to four or five hundred rounds. I, I don't know for sure. I don't keep a round count. I just 
I just guess by how many range sessions, and I usually shoot about 25 rounds of range session. session. And since this, since this is a winter carry gun for me, I am. Um, I certainly do shoot it a lot. Uh, so I'm going to put it back together real quickly. Um, okay, back together. So for me, reliable, really thin, really lightweight. Uh, the only criticism I could have of it, I guess, would be... Um, the, the the several issues that I had. I didn't need to polish anything up. The, the slide was looking pretty ratty, but I didn't need to refinish it. Uh, the, uh, uh, the I didn't need to polish this out. It was just a feel thing for me. There were several things I didn't need to do. Uh, I didn't need to replace the, uh, <laughs> the uh, slide stop either. I did. I, I actually I bought a new slide stop and a new disassembly pin because they were looking kind of ratty and um, I, I, I uh, spray painted or uh, I'd uh, Cerakoted my uh, my spring there in a two-tone type of finish. So the gun looks good uh, I wanted it to be a bit flashy. So I didn't pull out a, a you know a black gun uh, If I ever have to pull it out and use it for self-defense uh, The the holster kind of stays in the pocket not the best holster in the world I don't really have a good uh, way of carrying it that way, but the barrel stays right right at the end maybe protrudes just a little bit uh, and, and, and when I pull it out, I, I you know, if it doesn't, if it doesn't stay in, in the pocket, uh, you know, I could always pull it off with my other hand. I haven't had an occasion to do that. I just, you know, I have the gun with me, so that's all I need. So this is Ryan Ham. I'm going to do another video uh, with several of my carry guns over the years. This is my current winter carry gun, and I'm just about to uh, wrap up winter carry and start uh, carrying a lighter gun, and I'll show that to you, too. Um, the uh, the best gun on the market for self-defense is the one you have with you and if if it's a high point eh. if it's a jennings uh you're you're probably very poor or, or uh, not very well informed if it's a, a jimenez or uh, jennings or one of those uh the lesser brands this is about as cheap as you can go i believe and and have a reliable everyday carry gun that's uh uh, that's going to suit your needs. It's Ryan Ham. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, favorite, share, comment, and I really appreciate it. Ask any questions that you would like answered that I didn't answer in this video down in the comment section. Thank you. Goodbye.